Hey friends, so in this video we're going to talk about support and resistance and volume profiling. Let's get into it. Okay, cool. So we're going to look at support and resistance. One of the most interesting aspects of trading to me, because really when I think about support and resistance, I'm picturing like this, I'm picturing the ceiling, I'm picturing the floor and imagine that you're out in space and the ceiling breaks open and all the air gets sucked up. You get sucked through the ceiling. That's how I think about price here with support and resistance. I'm looking for earthquakes that break open the floor and let price just hammer down. Totally bizarre, I know. I'm gonna stop talking about space. We're gonna come back to earth and talk about actual price and volume. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do over here is just select the one hour chart. Uh, you can select any time frame. I just recommend looking at one hour. And I'm gonna hit the support and resistance studies. Now, all I need to do is select the number of support and resistance levels I want it to draw for me on the chart. So I'm gonna hit the number two for now. And you'll see that magically these two blue lines appear on the chart. But what are they telling me? Well, they're telling me how much volume was traded at those levels. And now why is it chosen those levels? Because that's where the highest amount of volume was traded. I can put in here the number 15 and now it's going to put in 15 levels of support and resistance. Now look at this cluster over here. You can see that there's this big price vacuum here. This is the ceiling, by the way. This is the spaceship I was talking about. Where if price breaks through here, potentially there's going to be a vacuum and it gets sucked up there. Now remember, you want to look at the heat map as well. How much support and resistance is there at those levels? But that we covered in a previous video. I don't want to talk about it right now over here. So I'm just going to hide that. But I want to look at support and resistance in terms of where was volume traded. Now, why am I talking about support and resistance in that way? Well, let's scroll back a little bit. Look at this chart in terms of context. Usually what happens is someone will say, OK, price touched here, price touched there, price touched here. There's support, there's resistance. No, that's not actually how it works because price can move very much without actually having a lot of volume. It depends on how thick the order book is. So you might be looking at the wrong area for support and resistance and you might be putting your stop losses or whatever in the wrong place. So really what we want to do here is add these back in again. Let's put in the number five and I can see that the support and resistance levels are cutting through these candlestick bars. You know, they're cutting through them over here, not at the top where price was touching like you've been taught. It's doing it based on volume. So this is really, really interesting. I'm actually going to turn that off now come out of these support and resistance and show you where it's actually getting that information from. So I'm going to click on volume profile over here. Now I can go over here and hit visible range and all of a sudden it pops on a volume profile for me and it's telling me if I just scroll out where is the action. So if I'm looking at this over here let me just get some context for you. Most of the fight between the bulls and bears is happening here over here right now, we can see what's going on right now. We can see the fight happening there. We could see it was happening there before. So you would have known, by the way, before price went down here and you were looking for where's the next level of support going to be, you could have looked at the volume profile. It would have shown you that there was a lot of action happening here and likely it was going to fall back into this trading range, which is exactly what it did. Now I'm going to unclick this visible range and I'm going to click session volume profile. And this shows me exactly that. It actually shows me per session what the volume profile looked like. Now, maybe that's not even good enough for me. Maybe what I want to do is click on this fixed area over here and choose my own area to look at for volume profile. Like again, I was interested over here. So I'm just going to click this small little range. And yeah, lo and behold, most of the volume was traded here. Now, here's the cool thing. This tool actually shows me that the rest of the volume traded in that session. Now, look how much the price moved over here with very little volume traded. This, this is again very important. You would have learned it from previous videos. You have to look at volume and price together. Price moved a lot with little volume and here price hasn't moved much with a lot of volume. So there's a lot of consolidation, a lot of fighting going on between bulls and bears in this area. But look at how easy it was for me to get that information and, and I can just uncheck that. I can just say okay now I want to do another fixed one and I want to look at it for this area over here and I can see again look at where all the volumes being traded there wasn't much volume traded here what does that mean that's my space rocket that's my area where there just really isn't much support or resistance so if we break through a key level here you can bet your bottom dollar that it's going to go through here it's going to break through there it's going to go into what I call the price 
vacuum. Now, we could do hours. We could talk for hours on support and resistance and volume profiling, but this is enough for you to get started, for you to start building your own story, your own context. How do you learn to trade? By doing, by sitting here and actually looking at it, getting the context, and then putting your money in. Like again, excuse the expression, but put your balls in the chopping block, right? Like that's how you learn. You have to go through the pain. You have to lose the money to learn this in my view and in my opinion. So, you know, go over here and actually test this out. On Tensor Charts, there's a lot of stuff you can do for free. Again, I can't remember what's free and paid for. I don't wanna get paid for promoting them on this video. Again, I've not included my affiliate link for them. It's just a really, really useful tool. So go and check that out. In the next video, we're gonna talk about something really awesome, which is the trades counter over here. So I can't wait to get into that. But for now, this should give you some really good meat to go and chew on. Until the next one, guys, take care and talk soon.